is the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns. I am your host, Brendan Clean, credentialed media member covering the Suns and the NBA for SB Nation, as well as Dime Magazine, and the host, of course, of the only daily Phoenix Suns podcast back on YouTube, powering through week number one. The response could not be better. I appreciate each and every single one of you for getting us through this week. It has been awesome. I... Appreciate you guys for subscribing. I appreciate you guys for listening. If you're not a person who uses YouTube, ignore me. But I appreciate the ones who are following along here. Um, we got to 100 subscribers very, very quickly. I figured we would. That's why this orange towel was just one of the giveaways. We're keeping it rolling. And the next one, I'm just going to unveil right now here for all of you. It is a 1,000 subscriber goal. We're going big. We're going to multiply by 10 here. We're going exponential throughout the rest of the week. So uh, we're going to get to 1,000. It might take a little longer. I do understand that, but it's an even better giveaway. A Kelly Oubre bobblehead. He has the AirPods in. He's got a Wave leather jacket, and it could be yours. If you subscribe to the Locked on Suns YouTube channel, that's all you have to do. Just hit that subscribe button, get me onto your feed, and you could have Kelly Converse on his feet right at your very hands. But we have a lot to get to today. Alfred Payton, contract that was offered and then signed a little while ago, now actually already official by the Suns. Didn't get to talk about it yesterday because Jalen Smith trade rumors were dominating the conversation. So I will get to Alfred Payton. I'm going to just split it up. I'm going to make the positive case. I'm going to make the negative case. Make things simple. I actually do think it could be a a decently consequential signing, even though he does figure to be um, basically the 14th man. As things currently stand, the Suns have one last roster spot now, and Peyton would be 14. So in terms of that, not huge, but I do think there's some ways where he could come into play. So I'll do the positive. I'll do the negative. And then I want to close the show actually with more of the backcourt position. Uh, Tyshawn Alexander, the other part of this Sun Summer League team, I believe they're going to be playing on Thursday night. I don't uh, did not check that, but they did not play tonight, and I'm guessing that's what we'll see. So I want to talk about Tyshawn Alexander um, and what he's potentially going to add. And I don't know if it's crazy to say, but could he add more than Jalen Smith here this season? I, I don't think... That's wild. So I figured the Alfred Payton thing would be a good jumping off point to get into Tyshawn and what it is that he might bring. So we'll close out the show there. I'm going to start with the positive on Alfred Payton, though, who is one more time on a one-year minimum contract per John Gambadoro. So roster spot number 14. Again, it should not be too, too big. However, um, Payton's a guy who you don't sign to be a nothing part of your team. You don't sign Alfred Payton with the expectation that he is not going to at least be some insurance for you as somebody who you do trust to play. So I'll get into the positive in just a second. Amazing selection, reliably low prices. Today's show brought to you by Rock Auto. All the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them that Locked On sent you. Positives on Alfred Payton. He gets to the rim. First and foremost, He gets to the basket. He is basically his entire career has been a guy in the top five to 10% in terms of rim frequency. How many shots are you taking at the basket? How many of your attempts are coming at the basket? Alfred Payton has always been at the top of that list. I'm going to get into the negative in the next segment. Of course, the opposite of that is he does not always finish there. But I think if you follow me, I can get you to, to at least be optimistic about getting to the basket and that and, and the fact that that can be pretty helpful. Defensively, he basically grades out as slightly below average, but not terrible. So defensive box plus minus, defensive win shares. 
he basically has Hubbard around neutral, around zero. Last 2019-20 uh, with the Knicks, he's a little bit above zero. Zero's average for those who don't know that stat super well. And anything negative is bad. Anything positive is good. But he's really never been too far off of just straight up zero. So just neutral, which for a bench player is fine. And, and I think that's another area to be optimistic. So he gets to the basket. He at least doesn't destroy you defensively considering what his role is going to be. And then best of all, he distributes the ball. And so that's that's obviously the number one reason that I, I would say the Suns were interested in him. So last year was a little bit of a weird season for him, which we'll get to in the negatives. But before last season, he basically was a lock for pretty solid assist numbers. So six in the sixes for his whole time in Orlando, came to the Suns, which I didn't even say, but I'm sure we all remember the trade deadline in 2018, plays a dozen or so games, does not get anybody excited. As a starter, again, this is a very different situation. The Suns are not acquiring this player to be their starting point guard by any means. He won't even be their backup point guard, right? Cameron Payne will be that. So then he gets to New Orleans, and then New York ups his assist per game to seven. Last uh, season before last, he was up at a 38.6 assist rate. He had a really solid statistical season that year in New York prior to this one, as far as distribution and defense go. Now, that's where I'll, I'll, I'll if, if, if you'll follow me there, that's where, I'll, where I will go here with the positives, which is the Suns offense is in a lot of ways predicated on paint to great, right? It's a very silly term almost. It's a very old fashioned basketball type of, um, coachism, but Monty is really big on it. And, and it obviously pays dividends for the Suns with the amount of floor spacing that they will have the best of Alfred Payton's career, right? Best of almost any team in the league, just with their four out and then DeAndre and rolling that, that is going to, if you can capably run a pick and roll, there's hardly a situation better for you than the one the Suns can offer. And Peyton can at least get to the basket, which again, like even Ricky Rubio can't really do, could not really do, right? And then distribute, right? So it's like, can he be what Rajon Rondo has been? And I don't think he's as good of a passer. I don't think he's as smart of a player. But Rondo, for much of his career, has been a guy who is not going to, to be very efficient on offense, is, is hesitant to shoot, but can run, run an offense, initiate an offense, get downhill, and find open players and keep the ball moving. That is basically going to be Alfred Payton's role. And I think if you're just asking him to do that in situations where the other guys are not on the floor and you're either having an injury, you're having rest, or you're just playing a deep rotation on any given night, a blowout, whatever the case may be, Alfred Payton's is not a bad option. He's on the minimum. You didn't give anything up to get him except for a roster spot. And that brings me to the last point. So if that's the role you're asking him to do, I think that makes you feel pretty optimistic. The other part of it is that Peyton, basically all he has to do is be worth a minimum uh, salary and be better than each one more. And I think he can check both of those boxes. So and that actually brings up a perfect example of, of why it's not insignificant who gets this roster spot, because we did see times where each one more was pressed into action. An 82-game regular season, a deep playoff run, Lord knows something fluky like Chris Paul's arm getting ripped out of his socket may happen again, right? So each one more had, had multiple regular season games where he had to play a major role, and then he was on the floor in big playoff moments because Paul was hurt. So Peyton has to at least clear that bar. I think he does. I think more physically was just not really there anymore. Like it's not a coincidence to me that his big game this season came against the Cavaliers. And then he finds himself in a situation against the Clippers, a very athletic and long team. Things don't look so good. Right. So um, I think Peyton can do the downhill paint to great type of playmaking for the shooters on this team I think this offense can reel him in a little bit where he doesn't he he shouldn't feel like he has to score. And then defensively, yeah, are there going to be times at the point of attack where he's going to get caught on screens and we're, you know, we're all going to be, you know, face palming? 
Yes. I mean, that's that, in doubt, undoubtedly true. But each one more was not up to that at this point in time either. So if you look at it that way, Peyton, as somebody who's going to get out there during the regular season and just try to make some stuff happen within the confines of a system that should help him look better, I do not hate it. And I do think he could be worth, you know, some some positive minutes here and there for the Suns if all of that can go according to plan and he can be contained to only doing things that he's capable of doing. All right. All that said, I do have to get to the negative because uh, if you know me, I was doing the show back in 2018 and lived through the Alfred Baton experience. So, of course, I do understand that there is a possibility that this is not all that great. So we'll get to that in just a second. First, though, a new sponsor for the Locked On Podcast Network, and that is Sweatblock. So we all know people, whether it's you directly or maybe it is one of your friends or family members who get a little bit of anxiety. They get a little bit of nervousness when they have to maybe publicly speak or they get into a situation meeting new people, going out, whatever the case may be, you start to work up a sweat and things can get very ugly. And look, if you're in that situation or you know someone who has been in that situation, regular deodorant does not get it done. Sweat block gets the job done because it is not a normal deodorant. It is individual wipes, not unlike a wet nap that you might get at a restaurant to clean your hands off. And it gets up in that area and protects from that stress or nervousness induced sweat. It doesn't let anything get out. You don't even have to worry about any of that happening because it's not going to let it come out. You can get all the nervousness you want. Sweat block has you covered. They, you can, you can use it for up to seven days per use. They have a dry shirt guarantee where if sweat block doesn't keep you dry, you get your money back. They have been featured and tested on the Rachel Ray show by firefighters who go in to a burning building and get the sweat off of their clothing. Nothing to find after they emerge from the fire. Best seller on Amazon for the past 10 years over 13,000 reviews, and it works. You wear what you want to wear. You have a little secret to confidence in your back pocket, lasts forever, and it is a must-have for everyone's toiletry bag. Because look, I said it was just, maybe it was you, maybe it was buddy, maybe it was your family, your brother, your dad, your uncle who deals with this. Maybe. It, it. I feel like women tend to have less issues with this because they are in this one case, very lucky to not have to deal with these things. Maybe it's you, maybe it's your wife, whatever the case may be, but everybody has to deal with that every so often. You end up in a sticky situation literally and metaphorically, and you just got something to go ahead and get you right. So get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com, sweatblock.com with the promo code locked on or at Amazon and CVS. Today's show also brought to you by Rock Auto. Rock Auto is really a solution to a problem we all have, and that is going to a chain auto parts store or even worse, a dealership and struggling through the insane hassle of telling them what you need, what car you have, what part you're going to want to buy, and then sitting idly there as they nickel and dime you, sometimes straight up lie to you, and you hate the whole time. You hate it the whole time. Rock Auto changes all of it. They are online. They don't even require a subscription, and they've been serving do-it-yourselfers like you, like me, for 20 years. So why spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same exact auto parts that you could get at Rock Auto by going to a car dealership? Well, the answer, obviously, is that you should not do that. Type in whatever vehicle you have, scroll down to the part that you need, hit purchase, and it'll be at your door within days. That is how simple they make it. You don't have to know all of the types of cars and, and parts and trim packages. You just type it in and they do the rest for you. You don't have to walk anywhere. You just type it into your computer. Rock Auto makes the process easy, affordable, and smooth. So go to rockauto.com right now, see all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in there. How did you hear about us box? So they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices and all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com. Okay. Negatives on Alfred Payton. See, I left myself a little less time. You're not going to hear me drone on about all the bad things about Alfred Payton, but I do think it's worth talking about because look, most people are going to look at this signing and be very puzzled. I think the main thing that I don't quite find myself understanding about this player is 
I mean, I guess you could say he's much more in the in the Ricky Rubio um, camp of 0.5 point guards than the Chris Paul camp, right? But we all know the Suns dispat disposed of, of of Ricky Rubio and moved on to bigger and better things once it became clear that he was limiting them. And so I think Peyton will do the same. Again, that is why he's on a minimum contract, but it is worth mentioning. He's not a three-point shooter at all. It's just never come along in his game. Last season, he shot 29%. The previous season, 20%. He has never shot better than 33% in an NBA season. So it's not something we should expect that is it's going to happen, which means he either has to have the ball in his hands or he is not going to be guarded. So it just reaffirms it's, it's a limit to what you can ask him to do. I said all he has to be is better than each one more. I still feel that way. But you look, and even the Knicks, who had far less talent overall than the Suns did, when it got to postseason time last year, the Knicks said, Derrick Rose, Emmanuel Quickly, and Wings, that is what we're going to go with. Alfred Payton is not a player who we think is going to do much for us come playoff time. And that's just, I mean... It sometimes is all the evidence that you need. Let's see. He he scored. He played two of the five playoff games and six minutes total this season for the Knicks. So in the playoffs, so they didn't feel like they could trust him. It doesn't really feel like the Suns are going to be able to do that either. So at the end of the day, look. Do any teams have the 14th roster spot with a guy you know filled with a guy who's going to come in and, and make a difference in a playoff game? No, that's a luxury that most teams can't afford to have. At the end of the day, Alfred Payton is a innings eater in the regular season who you hope you do not have to rely on in the playoffs. Each one more wasn't supposed to play in the playoffs. It ended up that way. So I think he's a better offensive player, potentially slightly worse defensively. And I think at worst, you're looking at a player who you just absolutely are not going to be able to trust. And you're, you're going to have to, you know, overextend Devin Booker as a point guard or, or some of these things. Cause I do think there is a bottom that can fall out on an Alfred Payton because of his unwillingness to shoot because he doesn't have the defensive sort of reputation and an IQ that that you would want, that an each one more, a veteran guy like that may have, that could fall out. It really could. But I don't want to yammer on too much about the negatives. I do just think um, the last thing I'll say is that there, when it comes to the, the, the floor falling out, I, I mean, that's one part of it. That's just sort of like the statistical, the stylistic, on and on. But I do think that there is, and it, it's sort of just making me think about it more broadly about the Suns. It's not necessarily something that I really worry about when it comes to Alfred Payton. But I think there, because the Suns play the way that they do, there is a dynamic that can emerge where you run into players who have a, a style, a selfishness, a, a score first mentality, a um, maybe a contract situation that, that ends up with a player doing too much and genuinely causing um, the, the players around him to suffer. I think, you know, not to uh, chastise my bobblehead man that I'm going to be gifting to one of you lovely subscribers, but um, the reality is Kelly Oubre is an example of that, right? Where he didn't really try, in my personal opinion, all that hard to fit in 2.5. I, I didn't get, it, it didn't ever feel that his number one goal when he was out there was to make his teammates better, make the system work, make things happen as a team player. It was more so I, I'm at my best when I score, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and look to do. And Alfred Payton is a similar type of guy to that. It, it's playmaking. It's not just the points, but we did see in 2018, the bar was very low for a point guard to come into Phoenix and make a difference. If you'll remember, Payton had multiple triple doubles in the few games that he played here, and at the end of the season, there was no chance they were going to want him back despite that production. And I think it, at worst, you just would worry that, some of that mentality and stylistic just doesn't vibe with this team. And you could be looking at a situation where the Suns are trying to trade him, cutting him, and they're back to square one with that roster spot. So look, I got, I get, like guys, I get it's the 14th roster spot, and I'm not trying to say that this piece, even if it was a player I liked way more 
if that roster spot is making a genuine impact on your ability to go out and win a W and W an NBA championship, you're screwed already. Right. So look, I'm not trying to advocate for this thing being a bigger deal than it is, but I think it's interesting. He's a fascinating player. We have the history with him. So I had to talk about him. Of course, um, we'll stick with the backcourt though. Like I said, and talk about Tyshawn Alexander, what he has shown at summer league in just one second. First though, quick word, from betonline.ag betonline is the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports the nfl coming up right around the corner i don't know about you i tend to appreciate miserable sports situations more if i at least can just bet on them and look that's shaping up to be what this cardinal season might look like bet online has you covered with the latest odds sign up bonuses and contest info constantly updated by the wonderful team over at bet online they have creative props they have game to game odds season odds all of the rest, win totals, you name it, the NFL and college football seasons are covered top to bottom over at betonline.ag. So do not sit on the sidelines anymore. Get into the action as kickoffs start around the country. And to do that, head to betonline.ag on the web or on their mobile app. Make an account. And when you do, use the promo code Locked On when you make your first deposit to get a 50% welcome Bonus, that's promo code locked on. When you make your first deposit, you get a 50% welcome bonus straight to your account. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Closing out the show here, Tyshawn Alexander, the undrafted rookie from last season, now entering his second NBA season. And I wanted to shout out my main man, former host of this show, Kellen Olson, who did a nice write-up on Tyshawn Alexander that I am not going to lie, inspired this here segment, but um, a player who I think we obviously have to talk about as summer league continues because Jalen Smith is the number 10 overall pick, but Tyshawn Alexander was a guy who, you know, a lot of smart draft people back last season in 2020 had as a player who should have gotten drafted. And I think the Suns were smart to snag him. He was one of those very quick signings of Potentially, there was some orchestration behind the scenes of, hey, if you don't go drafted, then we will go ahead and and grab you on a two-way contract. And we know the Suns worked him out. I believe he was working out in Phoenix, even separate from the Suns going after him or uh, setting up a a team workout. I think he was here. So they had an opportunity to to, to become familiar with him. And so I think we just shouldn't underestimate him is really, at the end of the day, um, my point here. And Kellen's piece was about the mid-range game, the the jump shot. And look, I mean, we know that that's a shot that you have to be willing to take and make in this offense. Cameron Payne has turned into a pretty solid mid-range shooter, despite not really being that. You know, it doesn't look natural for him. It doesn't always look comfortable, but he has that. He has the floater. He has that in-between game to balance things out. So seeing that from Tyshawn Alexander, a guy who in college was – really like a three and D guard is good to see. It means he's filling out his game. It means he's seeing what's working for the other guards on this roster in this system and, and adding it to what he does. Um, but I don't want people to forget, this is not a player who is some, you know, nobody, no name guy. This is a genuine player with promise. He shot 40% on six and a half attempts from three in his junior season at Creighton prior season was almost eight attempts per game, and he made 37%. So he has a long track record, good free throw shooter of being solid as a jump shooter. And that seems to have translated. He's making these mid-range looks in in preseason now, or in summer league now. We'll see if the range can continue to be extended. But that comfort shooting is going to go a long way because we also know he can defend. Um, he's a player who was a positive in defensive box plus minus and defensive win shares while he was in college. Guys like Brandon, my Monday co-host here on this show, were raving about his defensive potential. He has solid size where you can imagine him defending one and twos and potentially threes as his career continues. Um, he created steals, 2.2 steal percentage, 2.2 steals, um, or I'm sorry, 1.5 steals per 40 minutes in his junior season and his sophomore season. So look, he's a player who I think you should not overlook that should be considered a potential guy to not only contribute in actual regular season playing time this year. Um, Look, if he had a season that ended up being better than Alfred Payton's, I don't think that would surprise people. I mean, he's young, 
uh, as far as NBA experience, but he came to school as a, or he came to the NBA out of three years at school. So it's a guy who at least has experience playing basketball and is, is in his, you know, approaching his mid 20. So if he had a season better than Alfred Payton, if he was a guy who was getting playing time and, and I'll add one more in there. If he's a guy who encourages the Suns to go ahead and give him a roster spot sooner rather than later, I don't think anybody would be terribly surprised. Now, I'm not just overreacting to Summer League. I'm responding to guys like Brandon who or other draft folks who were really um, impressed with him right away. So I'll, I'll just say the numbers one more time. Kellen had it that. Um, Alexander was hardly taking mid-range shots back when he was at school. He is obviously making some for those of you who have watched it this season. And they're going to need it because, look, they condensed Javon Carter, Langston Galloway, and um, each one more into basically now Shamit, Peyton, and Alexander. So he moved up a little bit as far as the rotation goes. He has a real opportunity to play if he impresses in camp, if he looks better. I don't see any reason why they would not at least allow him to get some run. Um, We saw Javon Carter get that. We saw Cameron Payne get that sort of ahead of schedule, so to speak. And I just think the package has always been there. If he's rounding out his skill game a little bit and can at least get some points on the board for the Suns team, I think that's going to be really valuable. So he might be the guy I'm watching even more so than Jalen Smith because personally, I just feel like we're, we're learning that Smith is going to be pretty raw even this season. And I'm, I think they both will have a chance to play in the rotation if they want to, uh, if, if they want to, if they, um, if they earn it, if, if they show themselves to be up to it. But I'm feeling more like just because of the way that the rotation is shaping up right now and the fact that we're seeing Alexander add some some rounding out to his game, maybe it's a 50-50 thing between the two of them of which guy would be the one to play more minutes for the actual regular season Suns this year. I, I don't think that you should count out Alexander for eclipsing Smith in terms of just minutes over the course of the regular season. And look, that would be a real win. Uh, you heard me criticize the Suns for their young player management this this um, past offseason and the one before it throughout all of the past two shows. Um, But if they could get a guy like Alexander and have him actually be something, a guy worthy of a roster spot in some regular season minutes early in his career, that's a huge victory. So don't just focus in on sticks or or some of these uh, names that you had forgotten about here on the Summer League roster for the Suns. Watch Tyshawn Alexander. See what's up there. And obviously I will be doing the same every single day here on Spotify, Apple, wherever, but also, of course, now YouTube. So subscribe down below. Let's get to a 1,000. Get this Kelly Oubre bobblehead in your hands at your doorstep. I'll mail it to you. I will uh, send it as soon as I possibly can. And I'm getting the orange towel. I'm doing the selection tomorrow. So, again, that is at Suns to keep track of all the latest. Any of those announcements will be there. Any new shows, of course, will be there. Any of my silly thoughts will also be there. So, Uh, That'll do it for today. Enjoy your Thursday. One more show this week, folks, and uh, we'll round things out, see how Summer League continues to go, see how the rumor mill continues to treat the sun, see if they fill out this roster with one last guy. Enjoy. I'll talk to you soon.